because this country is in bad shape. The demonic is controlling the country. The demonic is manifesting everywhere in murder and abortion and, and hate. And uh, I mean, it's, it, it's, that's the way it is right now. And like I said last week, God's going to hold the church responsible. He really is. And, you know, I, um, I, next week I'm going to teach, I think, on a, a, a scripture that was just uh, recently revealed to me that actually tells why the church is so powerless. Um, and I'm not going to get into it right now because we're going to do some praying. But um, uh, uh, the reason they are powerless is they're, they're not obedient to God. And when God says that you need the power of the Holy Spirit, the infilling of the Holy Spirit, and you reject it, guess what? You're in disobedience. So uh, that's uh, what I'm finding out the church uh, as a whole is they're all in disobedience. Now there's some good people that are saved and they, they can teach some good things and they can do some good things, but they're still in disobedience to God's full word, his full gospel. And uh, one thing about uh, true apostles and those that are highly apostolic, um, you don't really, um, you can't really put up with that very much. You, you don't, I don't humor them. You know, I just tell it like it is because I don't care what they think. I don't work for them. I work for the Lord Jesus Christ, and he would be saying uh, the same things, and he did say the same things. Look what he said to the Pharisees. You know, you, uh, what are that? Uh, dead man's bones and white sepulchers and vipers. And I mean, you know, so who is he talking to? He's talking to the church of his day, the church that had no power. In fact, uh, the, I think a couple Sundays ago, I read a scripture where um, when Jesus started casting out demons, they, uh, you know, they said, what, what new doctrine is this? You know, like, oh, where you guys been? Well, that's where we're at now today, really. It's like, what new doctrine is this uh, uh, doctrine of deliverance? And my view, and I'm not trying to influence you, you just do what God says to tell you. But my view is I don't want no part of them if they're not doing deliverance. Because deliverance is the standard by which you know they're truly sold out to God. Remember last week I read where Paul said, I, Paul, a prisoner of Jesus Christ. Very few leaders of the church in this country especially could say, I, and whatever their name is, uh, a prisoner of Jesus Christ. Because they're not. What he was saying is, I am a servant, totally a slave, if you will, whatever word you want to use, to Jesus Christ. What does that mean? You're going to do everything Jesus said. So all the stuff that's in the Bible, they don't do that Jesus said they're supposed to be doing. They'll stand before God for that. So I don't have any, uh, I don't tolerate them, you know. Uh, we do deliverance on people occasionally, and they, I mean, that get their deliverance. I mean, everybody we do the deliverance on gets their deliverance, but occasionally uh, they'll get free and they'll go back to their church and you see them a year or two later and they're back where they were or worse, you know, why? Because they went to a church that didn't have no power. And that's what I, so, you know, it, it makes sometimes it makes deliverance just a waste of time. I would rather do deliverance on a person that doesn't go to a church. You know, they're Christian, they're a believer, but they've been to church and seen it and, and recognized it as, wow, this, this is a church that has no power. This is a church that's in pretense. Uh, this is a church that's uh, not active in the, in the kingdom expansion. They're more active in church expansion and they're everywhere. And that's why this country is in such a mess, because uh, uh, there's very few churches now that are kingdom expanders rather than just expanding their own denomination, their own church or whatever. And the seminaries, I don't have no patience with them either. The Holy Spirit can teach you more than any seminary can teach you if you have the infilling and you have the power. All you have to do is listen to the Holy Spirit and, and do exposition. And you'll learn a lot more. In fact, you'll learn things you can't learn in seminary school because everything they teach pretty much is on the surface. I mean, you know, they'll teach you how to preach a good salvation message, but they won't teach you what to do if while you're preaching that salvation message, somebody's manifesting in your, in your church on Sunday morning right in front of you on the floor, writhing or writhing. They won't tell you what to do with that. See, and so it's ridiculous because Jesus, when he walked the earth, uh, he never met a demon he liked. And every time he did meet, what did he do? He cast them out. He didn't deal with the nonsense of the devil. Yet the church uh, allows the devil to uh, just control them pretty much. They don't deal with 
the devil. And if you don't deal with the devil, folks, I'm sorry, you're really not sold out to Christ because he had 12 disciples and he taught them how to deal with the devil. Then when he had the 70 in Luke chapter 10, he taught them how to deal with the devil. So if you really want to serve God, you got to be dealing with the devil. You got to learn how to deal with the devil. Spiritual warfare is very important. Now, there's others, oh, we don't need that because we don't have anybody that, that manifests in our church. The reason they don't manifest is you ain't got the power to do anything if they did manifest. Plus, it's God's power isn't there to cause them to manifest. The demons are happy. Oh, let's go to that dead, dry church over there that <clears throat> doesn't do much. You know, um, my parents was uh, belong there, my grandparents. We've been going there for, you know three centuries or whatever, all my relatives. So there's no reason to go anywhere else. Yeah. There's a lot of reason to go somewhere else, go somewhere where the power is moving, go somewhere where if you got somebody in your family needs deliverance, you can go to the pastor and you can say, you know, um, I need deliverance or, or someone in my family needs deliverance. Can you help us? And he can say, yes, we got a deliverance team. The church is a mess folks. I mean, it is a mess. You can defend it all you want with all this I'm not talking to you people. I'm talking to whoever would, might listen to this later. But you can defend it with all this doctrine that's shallow, but you can't defend it with the Bible. They can't. I just gave you in that message some things that, you know, if you believe once saved, always saved, you've been told the lie. If you believe water uh, bapti uh, baptism saves you, you believe the lie. Now, who's the liar? Satan. So you're believing Satan. See how, how this works? It's two kingdoms. You believe one or the other, you know, and if you believe uh, you take that Eucharist every, uh, and that's like Jesus. No, no, no. That's just a wafer that represents uh, the last supper or communion. That's all it is. But I actually was a praise and worship leader in a church where uh, I had to leave early and I couldn't stay for the the communion where they take the wafer and they all drink out of the same cup. I wonder if they're still doing that now with COVID-19 going around. <laughs> you know, I'll think about it. Uh, and so I had to go and I told the pastor beforehand, I said, I'm going to be leaving early. So, you know, don't think I'm walking out and boy, he got irate. You know, he, uh, he talked to me like I was going to hell because I didn't stay for the Eucharist. Well, it wasn't long. I didn't go to that church. I mean, you know, it's ridiculous. See what, so them people were being lied to. So you see all the lies that are in the church? All right. The father of lies is Satan. So if they're getting lies, then who is it that they're worshiping? And don't even know it. They're worshiping Satan. So it'd be better off if they didn't even go to a church like that. If they were just Christians and decided, hey, we're just going to stay home and pray and find someone online or whatever who truly uh, believes uh, in serving God to the fullest and everything and do that. And uh, you can tell, <laughs> you can tell I don't have much patience at all with the church. You know, they're dead, they're dry, and they cause people who are really trying to expand the kingdom, they cause us to do a lot of, a lot of extra work. We got, we get calls all the time. For people that say, and well, you know, I go to this certain church, but uh, they don't do deliverance. And uh, and I'd say, well, do they believe in it? Well, not really. But sometimes they say, yeah, my pastor believes in it, but he doesn't do it. How can you believe in it and not do it? Either believe in it or you don't. Either do it or you don't. And then th those people are hard to deliver. You do can get them delivered, but then when they just go back to their church, there's an impartation, folks. you got to understand you who are sitting under this ministry right now, there's an impartation coming to you. Uh, it's an apostolic impartation. It's an impartation of truth. It's an impartation of, of uh, prophetic ministry, uh, healing ministry, deliverance ministry, and so forth. It's an impartation. So if you sit under someone who's imparting something else to you that's not of God, lies, then you receive that impartation. And it's harder to take the church out of the person, you know, than it is to them never in been in church. You get them saved and then you can get them uh, uh, delivered. It. That's what they need because you don't have to take all that church junk. I have no patience with the church. And it, as I watch what's happening more in the world, I have less patience, less patience, and less patience. And I'll stand up and I'll say it, tell it like it is. Don't call yourself a church if you don't even know the definition of it. Ecclesia.
That's the word church. You're a Christian gathering, maybe, but you're not a church. You're not a biblical-based church. You're a Christian gathering. You're, you're with other Christians. I mean, that's better than being out in the nightclubs, bars, and casinos, I'm sure. But you, you're not a church, according to the Bible. You just took the title. You just use it. Because if you were a church, a true ecclesia, and I'll explain the ecclesia. The ecclesia is Jesus' inner circle, the 12 disciples. That was his ecclesia. And it started with um, the Greeks. They, uh, uh, the, the Greeks started what we call the Ecclesia, and that was the inner circle. And then later on, the Romans put it into use. You had the emperor, and around him, you had uh, all these, uh, this inner circle, and they were the ones that uh, the emperor would send out to the uh, outermost parts of the kingdom and say, hear ye, hear ye, the king says this. In other words, they give the edicts of the kingdom to the subjects. So see, that's what the true church is. We're supposed to be giving the edicts of the king, Jesus, to the people. What's the edicts of Jesus? When you go, preach that the kingdom is at hand, heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, and cast out devils. And it says, and freely receive, freely give. In other words, you're supposed to learn all that, and then you're supposed to teach others. Where is the church in that? Think about it. And that's God's word. And they'll stand up there and say, oh, yeah, we believe the Bible cover to cover. And then I'll watch and say, no, you don't. You just lied. You don't believe the Bible from cover to cover. You believe the parts you picked out that's convenient for your ministry or for your church. It's really sad, folks. So we may be close, closer than we thought to the tribulation period because, you know, God can only take so much. Uh, when you read the Bible, you know, he's got mercy. He lets it go and lets it go. He lets it go. And finally, he says, no more. Enough's enough. And that's where we're at. And we're getting more calls now for people that need deliverance than we ever got in the past. And we're almost overwhelmed. Uh, I've been training up some of some of you now, so uh, we, we're not going to be overwhelmed. God ain't going to let that happen, you know. But we are. We're almost overwhelmed. Because uh, we're doing the, the job that many of these churches are supposed to be doing. Let me tell you about me, and you can do whatever you want. I will not go to a church that doesn't have a deliverance team. Forget it. I'm not going to do it because that's the standard. If they're doing deliverance, then they're going to do all the other stuff. You see? If they're doing deliverance, that means they're moving in the prophetic. If they're doing deliverance, that means they're teaching spiritual warfare. If they're doing deliverance, they're still into salvation because they got to get people saved before they can get the demons cast out of them. So that's the standard. That's the criteria for me. Now, y'all can do whatever you want. I mean, you know, but that's the criteria. If they're not doing deliverance, I don't want nothing to do with them. I don't, I'm not even going to call them a church. They're not the true ecclesia because the true ecclesia cast out demons i'm sorry the true ecclesia the 12 the inner circle of jesus's disciples did it i believe that's luke chapter 5 uh, or matthew chapter 5 excuse me and then in luke chapter 10 uh the, the the multitude did it so what makes us so high and mighty that we don't do it or we're not supposed to do it or we think we don't have to do it see that's a lie of the devil so a lot of these churches have bad spirits of lies in their mouth, speaking. The prophets have it. And we've seen that. You got to learn to discern, folks. You got to figure out, are you going to really serve God? Or are you just going to play around with it? Because you're going to face him. <clears throat> Sooner or later, you're going to face him. Whether you go to be with him or he comes to, to take you, you're going to face him. And it's going to be an Kind of an awesome judgment, I'll tell you that. The day of the Lord. And he's going to ask you, why didn't you do what my book said? Why did you do what man said? And you're going to have this answer. You ain't going to stand in front of God and or Jesus and in the judgment and say, well, the bishop of our church didn't believe in that, so we didn't do it. <laughs> I mean, that's stupid. Because he's going to have the bishop up there, and he's going to have to face Christ. So the church has got to wake up. 